Welcome back to another Test and Tune video, and today I'm setting up a Wi-Fi battery monitoring system. Yeah, I'm gonna call it a system. So I'm gonna use these Shelly Unis. Now these are, I guess, a universal Wi-Fi sensor. It says it on the box, but they're not intended for, or specifically intended for battery monitoring, but it is a function they can do. So the idea of this Shelly Uni is that you would use it in a smart home setting application where you can monitor something a water tank level but then it's also got two relays on board so you could use sensor inputs to create other functions or you can control those functions through the Shelly app I'm not really using these to their full potential because all I want to use is the sensor part of it but for monitoring car battery voltage while the car's in storage in a garage where you've got Wi-Fi access I think they're brilliant and much better than those Bluetooth dongles where you've got to get within a certain distance to check the battery voltage. The other thing I do like about the Shelly app, you can set up alarms. So the one I've been testing, I've got an alarm set. So if it reaches 11.8 volts, I get a notification. Something's wrong with the trickle charger. The car's not charging anymore. Something's drawing too much current. Go and check it before you ruin a $300 battery, which I did last month. So these Shelly Unis, they are relatively small uh, and basically they break down into two parts. We have the black wires on this side. These are for the two relays, uh, relay one and relay two. This is the main IO harness, and then we have a little Wi-Fi antenna here. So what I'm gonna do for this particular application is remove the wires for the relay switches, or the switches, because we don't need to use them. And I've basically got to join a few wires at the other end for power in and out. Okay, better read the manual. Okay, so let's just go over the wiring quickly. Now, it is relatively easy what we're gonna install here. Uh, just to note, this is, oh, let me do it the other way. So we'll, we'll put it in line. So we have the Shelly here and the actual wiring diagram that comes on the instructions. Hopefully we can see this all right. But we need to power the main Shelly up. Now, it does actually support AC up to 24 volts or 12 to 24 volts AC, and then DC up to 36 volts. So you could use this to do to check voltage on a truck, et cetera, as well. Uh, what we need to do, we need to power the Shelly. So we're gonna use pin one or the red wire. That's gonna be our main power source. And then the black wire is the ground or the neutral. The sensor side of the Shelly, the thing that we're gonna to use to measure the actual voltage. Now, keeping in mind, this thing is designed to connect to a various, well, quite a range of different sensors. And you can set it up to uh, like zero to five volt sensors. I think it can do zero to 30 volts actually as well, but it will actually power the sensor. So sensor VCC is if you are running an electrical sensor that's then gonna spit back a data signal or a voltage signal. So we don't need to use sensor VC, but we do need to use analog in. So we're gonna have analog in connecting to the battery positive as well, which is pin three. So pin one and pin three need to go together. And we do actually need to hook up the sensor ground. So that's pin six but that just needs to go to pin two as well, or the negative of the battery. And what that's gonna do essentially is pin one and two is gonna power the unit, pin three is gonna measure the voltage, and pin six is what it needs to also measure the voltage, I guess, so that the sensor side of the Shelly has the same current or same voltage going into it as the main power source to register the battery voltage. Okay, it seems pretty easy. The other thing I'm gonna do just to tidy this up a bit, I'm never gonna use these two relays, so I'm gonna desolder these four black wires just to make it a little bit nicer. And that one last wire that you can see there is the Wi-Fi antenna. I think what I'm gonna do and what I did on the other car that I set this up, I'm going to um, remove these and then we'll put some heat shrink over it just in case it can't, well, just so it can't touch anything metallic on the car. We do have a reset button here. So we'll make sure it's all working before we heat shrink it. But for now, let me get some wires prepped. So we've got those four removed. Now the wiring for the inputs to the unit, they're all very, very fine wire. I don't know what gauge it is, but it's nearly nothing. So you do kind of, you really do need to be careful with it. We'll separate the Pin one, which is battery ground, sorry, battery positive. Pin two is what we're gonna use for the ground. Now we need pin three to measure the voltage. So white and red need to go together. Um, ideally I'd like to crimp them, but they're so fine. What I'm probably gonna do is actually solder them to some thicker gauge wire. So let's join those two now just with a little twist so they stay together. And then we need to join sensor ground, which is the green wire. We 
need to join that with pin 2, which is the main battery earth, so those two need to go together. I did try setting this up without the sensor ground connected uh, on the first install I did, and basically you end up being about half or 0.8 of a volt off. So you need the sensor ground connected to get accurate voltage, or an accurate voltage reading through the sensor, I guess, which makes sense. Okay, we've got those two joined. Here's some wire I prepared earlier. So we've got some a bit thicker gauge wire at least that I can put into some crimp terminals. So we're going to twist in the probably the most horrendous form possible. That one. And then we got this one. And I'm just going to add some solder and some heat shrink to those. Okay, so let's just add a little bit of solder to these. Try to at least. Just keep those together. And keep these together. Ooh. And just some heat shrink over those joins. This one. All right. Okay. So, that should be all the wiring that we need. I'm going to probably trim off these because we're not going to use them. Can stay there. And the final install will have some heat shrink over all that. So, this end, I could now put some crimp terminals on, or loop terminals, whatever you want to call them. Okay, so I've just got it powered up. I'm going to open up the Shelly app, and we're going to actually configure this to connect to the Wi-Fi. So hopefully you're seeing a recording of what's going on. Uh, I currently am on no Wi-Fi. We need to connect to this device's Wi-Fi to configure it to connect to the house's Wi-Fi. So if I switch that, Shelly Uni, she comes straight up. We'll connect to that. And then we go back to the Shelly app. And we want to add device. We're going to add via access point scan. I don't think the unis have Bluetooth. Then we go next. We have to select that it is a Shelly Uni. Your device will connect to Red Network. Are you sure? Yes. So it has saved the network from before. It's going to connect to the Shelly. According to that, it's done. Finishing up, nice. Device name, this one is, um, we have BMW E92. We're gonna call it BMW E92. Done, next. Uh, it will eventually be in the shed, so we will save. So one thing I do like about the Shelly, it actually has uh, provisions for two Wi-Fi setups. Okay, just gonna see if it's gonna connect. Uh, so I could have it so that it connects to the Wi-Fi at home and then the Wi-Fi at work as well, which I do really like. 
Okay, so that's wired in. We are properly connected to the Wi-Fi now. So that means I don't need to be crawling in the boot of the car anymore. Now, hopefully I will overlay the screen to one of the sides. And what you can see here, the way that Shelly uh, is set up, like it's set up for home automation. So uh, we're really not using this as its intended purpose. So it's a bit of a weird layout, but what I do is I add the E92 to the home screen. So you can do that from the home screen. I've actually done it here, but you would click my dashboard, add device, select the device, and then you can add it. Now I've already done it, so I'm not gonna do it again. But that then displays all of the cars in a nice tile on the home screen. One thing I do really like about the Shelly is the automated notifications. Now because the Shelly is connected to the Wi-Fi network, which is connected to the internet, wherever I am, if the battery goes low, I'll get a notification so I can come back and check it. That's the biggest issue I find with those Bluetooth battery monitors. They don't, there's no notification. So if the battery does go flat and you don't happen to be near it with your Bluetooth connected, you're never going to find out that you're essentially ruining a car battery. So what we do, we create a scene. Now you can see I've got one for the M5 setup. We'll go add. We want to add a condition. And it is device based. And we're going to select the device. Oh, I can't remember if I mentioned it either, but the each of the Shelly Unis, they show two devices. That's because there's two switches. It has a sensor input, and then you can actually control both of those relays. That's why we have two E92s, but we're only going to show one on the dashboard. We'll collect E92, uh, ADC detection, when it goes less than, now I think it's at 13.11 uh, volts. So I'm going to set it to 13.08 volts so we can do a bit of a test. So less than 13.08 volts, we'll go next. We want to, okay, we want to trigger a scene. And so basically if voltage is less than 13.08 volts, it will trigger the scene. And this, the action is gonna be a notification. And we'll go phone notification. We will also add it, now we'll go phone notification, that's fine. And we will call it, E92 battery, oh, probably should spell battery properly. E92 battery voltage low. Sweet, done. And I'll just set it to an actual alarm for the test. Uh, execute the action over X amount of seconds. So basically, once the voltage is below 13.08 for one second, it will trigger the alarm. The reason that delay is handy is when you actually start a car and the battery voltage spikes just below, uh, it would trigger the scene on the other vehicle. So I've got that set to one second as well. So it needs to be below that voltage for over a second. And yeah, you can actually set up, um, you can set up during the week when this notification will be active. We're gonna do it all the time. And that's it. Yeah, do it for everything. Scene name, uh, I'll just call, uh, actually, if we can go red, can we choose red? That'll do. Scene name, uh, call again, E92 battery voltage low. On a roll with autocorrect today, save. So we've now got that scene there. Okay, we've had a bit of a cut there. Uh, I've made a couple of changes because we were using, well, I was using a 0.08 amp trickle charger, which wasn't really changing the battery voltage enough to do this test. I've also had to update the firmware. Uh, I was noticing the voltage was only updating about every 30 seconds to a minute. And I had forgotten that on the first one I set up, I did do a firmware update to the latest Shelly Uni firmware. And that seems to get the voltage reacting much faster. In fact, if I uh, unlock the car, Hopefully you can see there, we've got the E92 voltage. It's about a two second delay before it dropped from 14.8 to 14.3 as the car unlocked. But what we're gonna do, I'm going to go back to my home screen and hopefully you guys can see that. And we're gonna unplug the charger and see how long that error takes to come through. So, charger is unplugged. And there we go, you might be able to hear that. But that's the alarm we get. Now I've got it set to alarm. You don't, it's really upset. Okay. <laughs> so that's how quick you can actually get a notification that your car battery voltage is now a problem. It's 
probably overkill. You don't need to be notified within a few seconds of it happening, but I think it's pretty good. And the fact that this will work anywhere, because Shelly, the Shelly Uni is connected to the internet, wherever you are, you'll get that notification. Where with those Bluetooth things, you have to actually go to the car, try and connect to the Bluetooth battery sensor, and then see if it's gonna work. Look, using a Shelly Uni as a battery voltage monitor for a car that's in storage, I think is brilliant. As long as you've got access to Wi-Fi where the car is being stored, you're set. And I, I think I did mention it earlier, it's really concerned about that voltage. I'm gonna plug the charger back in. Okay. There we go, and you can see it's already climbing on the app. That's brilliant. Okay, so let's go into it. Now, something I just wanted to show you quickly, you can, if you go to connect, sorry, connectivity, that one, you can actually set up two Wi-Fi hotspots. So what I've done for, what I'm going to do for my cars is have it so that I can have my home Wi-Fi where the shed is, or I'll have it connected to work. So if a car's left at work overnight or whatever for a month, or sometimes this thing happens, I can actually get a notification to go and check the battery, get one of the guys at work to put it on charge if I'm not there. And it's just brilliant. I really like it. I did think about putting a Wi-Fi hotspot into the vehicle just for this. So the Wi-Fi hotspot would be providing the data connection, and then it would essentially work anywhere where the car is. The car doesn't need to connect to Wi-Fi. I don't know, I think it's a good thing, but it's definitely what I want. I'm really upset that I killed a $300 battery this year. For some reason, the triple charger stopped charging that was on the car and yeah, ruined what was a good battery because it sat flat for about two weeks and it was down to four volts and I could not get it to come back. So hopefully these little $18 unis, which I don't think I mentioned at the start, they are only $18 each, um, hopefully save me from destroying a few batteries over the next couple of years. Got any questions about how to set it up, let me know. Um, yeah, I haven't actually seen anyone else use this on a car but it definitely works. I like it. Thanks for watching, guys.